Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, today we're going to be talking about the... Evans Audio. <laughs> it's not Evans Audio. I wish it was. I wish it was. So, I didn't know you'd been making amplifiers, Mike. Oh, well, just in my so spare time. Very clever of you. Yes, they so, only play Rush. Yeah. yeah, I thought they might. So, there's, uh, there's, on, there's off and Rush, isn't That's there? It. That's it, time. yes, yeah. So, um, so, this is the Edwards... Yes, audio. I beg your pardon. Edwards Audio. Yeah. Um, named after Kevin Edwards. Yep. Uh, who's uh, a bit, oh gosh, Kevin's been in the industry forever, hasn't yeah. he? And yeah. he's, uh, he's famous for um, all sorts of, of weird and wonderful things in the past because he started, I think, forgive me, Kevin, if I've got this wrong, at Exposure Electronics back in the day with John Farlow. Um, yeah. A, a brand which, as you know, are very close to my heart because... Um, I do actually own most of Exposure <laughs> products which they've, they've ever made. So remind us how many Exposure uh, no, amps you've got, Mike. No, we've done that on a previous riff, so. it took about 15 <laughs> minutes. So, Would you like um, to detail them? But, Was it the 1, 2, 3, 4, right. 5 and 6, yes, yeah, 7, they're, 8, they're, and 9, 10, 11, 12? Luckily they were all easily remembered so, by their names. Okay. Um, but, uh, but, and then Kevin went on to do Cable Talk. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure... Lots of people will be familiar with that because they've got he did some fantastic interconnect speaker cables, all these things, and then he went into Talk Electronics. Yes, that's right. Talk Electronics, um, doing again hardware stuff this time. Yep. Pre powers and CD players, I CD think. CD players, and yeah. Integrated and stuff yes. like that. And this is the latest offering. It is. This is from yeah. from from Edwards from Edwards Audio. Um, and it's a dinky little integrated amplifier. It is. Um, in fact, it's rather an, an unusual product in some ways, as we will we yeah, will show you because it it's uh, it's yeah it's kind of um, it's it's kicking against the fray a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. So, so I mean, let's let's sort of rewind back to the mid '80s when we were buying cheap integrateds. Yeah. And um, so we were kind of thinking about things like the NAD. 3020B or 3130 as it was just coming out. Budget entry level. Yep. yep. And you, you said the R8, Rotel RA820. Yeah, 810, uh, BX, 820. Something like that. Yes, um, yeah. And those would have been about £150 yes, yeah. in 1985. They were your bottom line entry level yeah. amps, really, weren't they? For proper hi fi. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you, if you spent any less, you just didn't get a hi-fi amp. No, did you? no, you didn't. You, no, you got no. some piece of tat. Um, you did, you did. So uh, they were sort of purist, entry-level, budget, starter, proper, real hi-fi, as we used to call it. Um, and this, in today's money, um, it would be £150 in 1985. Uh, it's 429 quid. Um, and um, so it's a super, super budget, entry-level, integrated... And the interesting thing is that it's not unlike many things uh, made in, in, in the Far East. It's made here in Wiltshire. And eagle-eyed viewers yeah. will notice that we've got a change of venue this week. Because yes. we, are, we are actually from Wiltshire, uh, yeah. just down the road from Edwards Audio's uh, absolutely. A manufacturing plant. Yes, exactly. So, We're not in Edwards Audio. We're no. in my house. But, uh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, we've been drinking cider and eating carrots all day. So uh, <laughs> not that we fit into any natural stereotypes. No, but uh, but I, I don't think uh, too much cider has been consumed in the design of this product because it's no. very it's very good, isn't it? It's very very good. Yeah, um, and it certainly belies its its price tag. Yeah. Um, what I will say is, sort of from the front on, um, it's actually sort of quite. Retro, like the 1985 amps, which yeah. we've talked about, you know, with the sort of, uh, with the sort of Allen key fittings and a you yeah. know, old-fashioned headphone jack and sort of very minimalist. Yeah. But it's interesting. So from the back panel, the back panel, it's got all sorts of uh, blanked-out plugs. Yes. Um, do you want to do you want to just explain a little bit more about why that is? Yes, because basically this is the absolute budget version. Um, I'm presuming that, uh, well, as far as I know, there are some kind of optional extras available, like Bluetooth. Um, uh, it would seem that there's a, a DAC functionality as well that you can you can also specify. Um, but I believe it, this one comes with a moving magnet phone yes. stage built in. It does. It um, does. And, um, you know, Kevin Edwards does good phono stages, doesn't he? He really does, so, actually, yeah. The, the yeah. Edwards Audio do an excellent phono stage mm. for, for stupidly little amounts of money as well. 
Um, but it's interesting. So, so I remember, gosh, back in time, my dad used to have a Ford Cortina. Do you remember my dad's Ford Cortina? Yep. Um, and that had loads of blanked out <laughs> as well, because it was yeah. like the L version, yeah. which meant that it didn't have any any optional extras whatsoever. Yeah. So I'm feeling, you know, a bit like my my dad's Cortina <laughs> is the back panel here, because we've right. got we've got we've got no optionals yeah. whatsoever. So um, the, the only difference being is that the, the blanks are on the back panel here, whereas <laughs> yeah. with your your dad's dashboard, it was you know. Sort of uh, reminding you what you could have had if you'd what, bought what you GL. could have won. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I reckon on on even on the sort of top of the range gear, uh, there were probably still bits yeah. sort of blanked out just yeah. to just to keep you teasing and guessing. Um, so, but look, I mean, this is this is a you know you can tell it's it's sort of um, it's not mass produced. It's no, it's, it, it's a you know quite a, a bespoke bit of bit of kit really. Yes. Um, but it, it doesn't look homemade. Um, you know, it doesn't look like a kit amp, but it, 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 to put it politely, it lacks the kind of finish and sophistication of, uh, you know, uh, of more expensive amps. And, um, yeah. uh, you know, even if you, you spend a few hundred pounds more, you'll, you'll have a, a, a much swisher looking product from another manufacturer. You would do. Um, but going back to 1985, we would not have cared about no. that a jot. No. And, and you know, we we didn't with the amps which we bought. You know, my name yeah. Nate is sort of bolted together with sort of glue and hope. Yes, well, um, it looks much better than your name Nate. It, it does, actually. <laughs> and um, um, I hate to admit it. Um, and also your NVA AP30 was yeah. as well. That was yeah, sort yeah. of all sort of, you know, yeah. uh, very homemade. Yeah. Um, because, again, it pretty much was. Yeah. Um, so we're not kind of saying that about it. But what I am saying about this is the reason why we bought the Nate and the NVA was because they sounded fantastic. Yeah. And this sounds absolutely brilliant. Yeah, uh, for the for the price point here for this dinky little bit of kit, it really does kick it out, doesn't it? it yeah, it does a great yeah. job, um, and I think we're we're definitely genuine fans of this, aren't we? Absolutely, and um, the the interesting thing is that Kevin Edwards has not chucked a couple of cheap Class D power modules in the back. Um, he's actually done a proper Class A B circuit, as it were. Um, with a with a you know a, a decent power supply, and he's kind of used all the sort of audiophile best practice as much as is possible at the price. Yes, and I think it's fair to say that he hasn't uh, lavished too much of the budget on on the sort of cosmetics and the no. the design side. But you know, um, as you say, that that's kind of almost a badge of of audiophile credibility isn't it i couldn't agree more yeah. and and in fact you know going back to kevin's early days when he worked with john farlow at exposure electronics you know that was also their ethos very much was to concentrate on the quality of the components get the sort of most solid uh, transformer yeah. you, you possibly could so most solid power supply make sure your output transistors were really good quality yeah make sure you had a good potentiometer yeah you know all of those things and, and exactly what you know they've done in here quite clearly yeah. and, and you can tell that just by listening to it yeah because it sounds absolutely great well we absolutely we were uh you know we've been listening to it earlier on today actually um together and um it's only got 30 watts rms per channel into eight ohms so you have to match it to reasonably sensitive speakers so i'm afraid mike's beloved falcon audio ls35a's uh yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't produce a squeak your mobile phone would sound louder than, <laughs> uh, than that um, yes, but uh, we had uh, some Paradigm Founder um, uh, bookshelf speakers, um, and they—I uh, think they've got a sensitivity about eighty-nine dB, mm -hmm. and didn't it didn't really sound out of its depth, did it? Not at all. No, so, no, it drove them really well. Yeah. Um, actually, we've got a riff coming up on the on the Paradigms too. We have, and um, we'll yeah. have a chat about those yeah. another another day because yeah. they're quite unusual, uh, yeah. quite unusual loudspeakers. Yeah. But, um, yeah, really, really impressed with this. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. And it's it was the same when we had the NVAs and the Nates, which were also you know not high-powered amplifiers by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. You had to be quite careful which speakers you matched to. But if you got it right, then it, it was they were super, absolutely yes. super. So the trick with this amp is absolutely to match it with um, you know a sensitive speaker, um, a small floor stander, uh, you know, w might work even better because they tend to be more sensitive than bookshelf speakers. Um, but anyway, uh, you, you can't really use it with a with a medium to low sensitivity uh, speaker in a large room. I think that's fair to say. Um, but when you do match it to the right speaker, it sounds uh, it sounds. 
it, it kind of, it's almost like an exposure amp that's shrunk in the wash, isn't it? <laughs> it is a little bit, yeah. So. But, but and I'll tell you why I do agree with that, is because it's got that magic ingredient, which is, it's got, it's got that musicality, that kind of X factor. Yeah. It's really nice to listen to. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, the measure of that, the measure of the musicality, the scale is, is how much you tap your foot. Yeah. Um, and definitely, this is a foot tapping amp, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, it, really, it really does uh, sound really nice, really sweet. Uh, and, and when I say that, that makes it sound like it's not sort of detailed or analytical, but it is that as well. You know, it's not missing a trick. No, I mean, it's, it's got about as much detail as you can expect for 429 quid. Yeah, in fact, um, way more. Yeah. If you want yeah. to go down that route. Yeah. So um, we were playing, um, we were playing um, Surprise, Surprise, Rush. Um, what was the first track on that album? Uh, uh, on on Place Under Pressure? Uh, After Image. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, and, uh, After Image. Well, and yeah, and, and it's it's a really tough album to play, to be fair. Cause it it's, is. It's a, sort of, it's a quite a harsh digital recorded album. Um, but this this did a terrific job. It did. It? it wasn't harsh. No. Um, and um, you know, it, it gave a reasonable amount of insight into into the recording and what was going on. We played Peel Sessions Micro Disney Town to Town. Yes. Now there's a there's a a, a band which yep. you probably have never heard of, but you know certainly deserve an awful lot more exposure and credit than so yep. no pun intended um, than 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 they get. Um, we played Kraftwerk as well. Yep, um, absolutely. Man Machine album. Man Machine, yeah, uh, which is um, which is great. Robots, uh, first track, I think. Yes, yeah. Um, and it was, Pure analog recording. Yeah, um, yeah. It sounds sounds re- sounded really good on this. Actually. Really, it was yeah. much better than you'd expect for, for yes. the money. Yeah, um, and I and I go back to thinking about you know 150 pound amp in 1985, i.e. real terms, the same price, and would we have got as good results from a from an ad thirty twenty. B or, or, or Creek 41, 40, 40, um, well, it would be pretty close, I'd say. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, certainly very good sound uh, and, um, uh, and in no way, I think, um, a toy. It's proper hi-fi, isn't it? It is proper hi-fi. And, uh, and it made me sort of think, you know, there really isn't very much else at the price which can deliver, you know, the, the, the bang yeah. for buck that this little Edwards audio amp can deliver. Um, I, yeah. I'm struggling to think of something yeah. at that price, which is as good as this. Yeah, well, you're going for a Riga Brio, maybe, but again, yeah. that's a bit more expensive. It is, it is. A couple yeah. of hundred quid. Um, yeah. So. And, and that was, I mean, you know, again, do, using your 85 analogy, if you had an extra sort of £100 and 85, you'd, you'd buy, a, you know, a, a better amp again. Yeah. And so I think, so sticking around the price point, yeah. I think, you know, I, I, I'd stick to my guns. It, yeah. You'd struggle to find a better amp at the price. Yeah. Um, and and you know, I think if you match this with say one of the little say um, Cambridge streamers, yeah, uh, and as M- you, yeah MXN ten that kind of thing, yeah. awesome, yeah, absolutely awesome. And then if you if you paired that with you know a, a, a easy to drive pair of speakers which aren't hugely expensive, you'd have a cracking system. Yeah. You'd have a cracking system. Yeah. If Kevin Edwards was here, he'd, he'd also he'd also tell you, and I know this is true, to make sure you budget well for your ancillaries. Yeah. So, you know, spend a bit of money on some decent speaker cable and interconnect. Kevin's yeah. a big advocate of that, hence why he set up Cable Talk yeah. in the first place. Uh, I'm not going to go into a not going to go into a cable uh, discussion here. Um, but in my humble opinion, you know, it's worth spending a few quid on that. Yeah. On budget systems, it yeah. tends to be neglected. And then you end up with something really, really cracking. But, you know, Kevin Edwards, great stuff, my friend. Great stuff. Love yeah. that. And love it. You know, you, you've also got to admire his, um, um, <laughs> as George Galloway once uh, said to Saddam Hussein, your sheer indefati- indefatigability. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I think I got that right. I'm not sure. So, um but uh, I'm not comparing Kevin Edwards to Saddam Hussein. <laughs> I was going to say, well, there we go. It's, <laughs> uh, or George Galloway, I'm not, hopefully. I'm not, yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. not George Galloway either. But, Kevin, um, it was all going so well. Yeah, sorry, there, Kevin. Um, I think I screwed that one up. <laughs> we like your <laughs> <laughs> But um, he, he's, he's just opened a new factory in Wiltshire. Yes. Um, you know, a bigger one. Um, he's manufacturing hi-fi in the UK. Um, he's not um, shipping it out, uh, you know, uh, abroad, as it were, for, for uh, to save money or whatever. He he believes in manufacturing and making stuff, uh, and he designs his own stuff. And um, you know, it's it's not easy, is it, no. to do that? No, it really um, isn't. You and, know, ten out of ten, yeah. really for that. And it's it's not easy at fifteen hundred quid. 
So at, at under 500 at 429, you know, that's a real, that's a real, uh, um, yeah. you know, a, a real piece of work, I think. And, and you know what Kevin will do as well? He will, he won't scrimp on components. No. He'll, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll get the best he can within his budget because yeah. um, he knows that's the secret to making great amps. And of course, that comes from that exposure heritage as well. As yeah. we said earlier, exactly what they did. Um, and I can, I can sort of feel that in this product. Yeah. So yeah. very, very good indeed. Um, both really like it, but let's do a, let's do a riffometer. Yeah. On it. So what what are we going to give this out of ten? And now and when we say this, I'd really want you to just keep the price point in mind. Yeah, I mean it has to be uh relative to everything else. Um I mean I think it's gotta be a nine actually. Yeah. Uh, especially as it has a half decent moving magnet uh, section in. Absolutely. And a headphone stage as yes. well. Yeah. Um, you know, so he wasn't trying to save money with those either. So um it's very nice. It's it's a, a very impressive uh, thing, I think, for the money. So how yeah. about you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you all the way. It would only drop that one point for me just because it, it is, you know, very clearly sort of um, uh, some some budget has been spared on the aesthetic. Yeah. But that is it. And I'm not, actually not that bothered about that. Do, do you to want him fair. to starve, Mike? <laughs> Bless Kevin. Not so, at all. Not at all, Mike. So not in the least. I, I, no. I wonder where the, where the cost savings <laughs> could come, frankly. Uh, no, you're quite right. You know, you're um, quite right. So I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So two nines, which is yeah. which is high praise indeed from the from, from us, isn't it? Uh, so Grumpy old uh, gits. That's grumpy yeah. old gits. So yeah, well worth an audition. Well worth a listen to. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and to Kevin Edwards, you know, hats off to you. You've done another great project. So there we are. Um, thank you very much indeed for watching this episode of Hi-Fi Riff. And we will return back with some more episodes from Wiltshire in the future. And you absolutely new spiritual home. Wow. There we go. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> See you again. Bye. Bye. Bye.